or higher levels because now what I'm saying is how do you get a clean environment because, you know, for our family, we're aware of this. Okay, I don't even own a cell phone. My husband, after continual, bar- you know, getting barraged by all the research for me, has now reduced his cell phone usage to probably less than 10 minutes a month. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't allow my kids to have cell phones. They have a Nintendo, but I don't allow them to play the wireless. Mm-hmm. We, of course, have cable computers. However, a 1,000 meters away is a power line, and sitting on top of it are four cell phone towers. Yep. And then our next-door neighbors have wireless. And I had someone come here to test, and their wireless is coming into our house. Mm-hmm. It's coming into our bedroom. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm starting to feel, you know, we've lost our choice. That's I'm right. trying to say, okay, so if my kids are radiated at school, you know, and I can't, you know, really get the gumption to pull them out at this point, but at least I can, at least I can keep things clean at home, and that's even been taken away from me. So now I'm thinking, well, now what do we do? Right. Well, I think there's going to be some um, class action lawsuits uh, coming up fairly, fairly soon because uh, more and more people are getting sick because of the wireless technology that their neighbor has and it's coming into their homes. Um, also, they're putting smart meters on homes in Canada and a number of different provinces. And um, smart meters use microwave energy as well, to, and in some American states as well. And I know people have been contacting me who have a smart meter on their home, and some of them are, are sensitive, and so they're, they're reacting to this. And what we're doing is, is recommending ways that they can shield their internal environment, not the smart meter, because that has to communicate, but uh, where they can begin to shield their exter- internal environment. And some people are actually refusing smart meters because um, uh, of the uh, exposure and their, their ill health, but also there's evidence that they're um, not reading correctly. They're giving you much higher readings than what, what electricity you're using. And some of them have been improperly installed and, and they've had fires with them as well. So there's all sorts of reasons why we shouldn't be using smart meters on the homes. Mm-hmm. So let's get into some practicalities. In your opinion, because you're you're on top of all of the research across the board and you're seeing the real life susceptibilities, okay? Some people are susceptible, some people are sensitive, some people are not. Mm-hmm. If, okay, if I have a child in a school that has wireless computers, but my child is, is showing no overt signs of hypersensitivity, okay, maybe mm-hmm. the child gets a nosebleed, maybe they get a skin rash from time to time, mm-hmm. but nothing that can be tagged unequivocally to wireless exposure, right. what, sh- what should I do? Well, I'm not. I'm not in a position to tell parents what they should do um, because I, I feel really. Uh, when you make choices like that, it's based on more than just the science. It's it's based on your value system. It's based on how much money you have. Whether you can afford to put your kid in a school. Very often, you know, you might have to pay more to to put them in a school that doesn't have wireless. Um, if you have to, you know, bust them further away, things like that. So I really feel that the decision the parents end up making have to weigh all of that and balance all of that. As a grandmother, I don't want my grandkids in a school with wireless technology. I simply don't want that. And I know that parents feel, some parents feel the same way. They've offered to purchase um, cable for schools so that they don't have to go wireless. In some schools, they're actually putting wireless in where the cable already exists. <laughs> so they're having a redundant system because they think it'll be better. It's more modern. It's more progressive. And actually, it's, it's a worse system from various perspectives, including... Um, um, uh, security, for example, it's much easier to tap into your computer in a wireless mode than if you have cable, for example. And um, so, it's not as fast either. So if you have 30 kids in a classroom downloading information at the same time, it's going to be very slow. Uh, so you're, you're not even dealing with the best technology. It's the cheapest technology, and that's why this choice is being made. It's convenient and it's cheap uh, in the short term. It's going to be extremely expensive in the long term. So my recommendation is for the schools to either go wired, if possible, if they've already gone wireless, to limit the exposure to just part part of the school so that, um, you know, you might have a computer lab that's wireless and you go into a room, 
get the information on your computer that you need, and then you go back to your seat, and, and you're not in the wireless environment. So, you know, doing it that way, turning it off when no one's using it, uh, allowing wireless-free areas in the school, I think, is extremely important. And then any parent who wants their child not to be exposed, they should have that choice. You know, you don't want your child to be exposed um, to cigarette smoke. And so we banned smoking, in, you know, on school property. When I was a kid, you know, kids could smoke in the schoolyard, you know. Um, but we've banned that. We don't allow peanuts in schools because a very few number of children have peanut allergies. Um, and so we have to you be know what? very that's actually That's actually a very good comparison. Because that's another argument that you hear. You say, well, listen, there's such a low percentage who are sensitive. Why should the rest of us suffer? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, hello, peanut allergies. That's right. I mean, that is a prime example. There's mm -hmm. so few children allergic to peanuts, but nobody's allowed to bring anything containing, and in some schools they've banned all nuts. That's right, that's right. Which is, for me, a serious inconvenience. Exactly. Yes, exactly. But you're willing to do it because someone else's child, their life might depend on it, so you're willing to do it. Also, when parents are, when, when your child goes on a school trip somewhere, your, you know, form comes home asking you if you give them permission to leave the school property on this trip. Well, you should be asked, you know, for all sorts of safety reasons, you should be asked the same thing. Do you allow permission for your child to use a wireless computer? And if your answer is no, then the school should, in my mind, uh, make alternative arrangements for that to happen. Mm -hmm. I actually think that just like asbestos, we're going to be ripping out wireless technology from schools within the next five to ten years because so many kids are going to start getting ill if they're using the high exposures that they're using in some of the schools here in Ontario. Right. Because they have industrial strength Wi-Fi monitors, uh, Wi-Fi connections. Um, but really, there's no way for us to go into our schools and find out what they have. But would you say that if a school, if the whole school is wireless, it's going to be at industrial strength? Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's the best system for the school in terms of connectivity. So you're not going to have any, you know, you're going to have um, no areas where you can't use the technology. Yes. And it's, it's the IT. It's the IT people that are are pushing this because uh, you know they want to make sure that you've got all the convenience of using your computer, you know, while you're in the toilet in the washroom if you want to. And um, yes. and I don't think that's necessary. And certainly, kids under the age of um, you know what about ten? Uh, I don't think they need to use wireless technology. Um, I think there's a lot of ways of teaching them with without having that wireless connection in, in elementary school, for example.